Oh, thank you very much, Madam President. Um, I will try to be, and I will be brief, because my colleagues on this side of the aisle have done a very good job of identifying and outlining all of the problems with the Senate one-house budget, knowing, of course, full well that it's a one-house budget, which means it's really nothing. It's a political document. Uh, it's a marker in a three-way negotiation um, that was true in we were in charge, it's certainly true, uh, with the current majority. But there's something, I, I, I want to speak to some of the comments that I've heard and sort of surmise. When $7 billion in new taxes are some taxes, minimal, maybe to somebody in Manhattan, but not to somebody in Niagara, not to somebody in much of New York State, that almost crystallizes the problem when $7 billion is just a little bit, just a little tax increase, when $245 billion, when that's some money, uh, it, it, I think that shows you the problem. If spending money made New York more affordable, we'd be the most affordable state in the country. In fact, we're the least affordable state in the country. One of my colleagues said so when they voted themselves a pay raise. Got to increase costs because it's expensive to live in this state. Ironically, many of their policies are the very reasons it is so expensive. New Yorkers know this. They're paying more for every factor of their life, and they're getting the same or less. And that is absolutely true here in the state of New York. Their quality of life has gone down due to crime. And even though the governor had a very modest, almost window dressing retail theft task force, that was too much for the majority, so it's gone. So crime, we know, quality of life crimes, especially in the subways across most of our major cities here in New York, are up. Uh, we know cost of basic goods and services are up. We absolutely know the cost of energy is going up and will continue to go up. The data does not say it will go down. It absolutely will go up. That's even if the infrastructure is there to support it and the technology is there, which of course it is not. But $2.4 billion to an illegal migrant crisis which continues to be exacerbated and made worse by the policies passed out of this chamber and the other one, $1.6 million to transport families of criminals, no doubt, I hope, on an electric bus. But the truth is, that we are spending more and have spent more in the last six years since the Democrats took control of this chamber. All funds is $75 billion more than the last budget passed when Republicans were in charge. $75 billion. That is larger, as you heard, than 37 other states' total budgets. Just the increase. Now, you tell me how that is sustainable. The governor doesn't think it's sustainable. I don't even know if some of my friends on the other side of the aisle think it's sustainable. But no question we have people in this chamber who will continue to advocate for more taxes, increased spending under the failed, misguided, misplaced sense that somehow that means we're making New York more affordable and we're helping more people. And if that was the case, we wouldn't have an exodus of people from this state. My colleague, when she says people aren't leaving, that is factually incorrect. We lead the nation in out-migration. We have for several years, and it is, it is very simple why. It is budgets like this, or proposals like this. That is why people have left this state. That is why they will continue to leave this state. They know, in spite of all the fancy speeches, and the figures, and the data points, and some of the nice commercials, they know the truth, and they're deciding, and they're voting with their feet. And that is why I, along with the members of this conference, and I can tell you, if a lot of New Yorkers were here, they would join us in voting no on this Senate One House bill today. Thank you very much, Madam President.